In my discussion here on low to intermediate risk prostate cancer, um, certainly I'm not going to talk about the results or outcomes which are likely familiar to you all, but really the focus uh, is going to be where do we go from here and how do we apply some of the exciting innovations and other aspects in the management of low and in particular intermediate risk prostate cancer. So uh, here are the th radiotherapeutic options uh, that are available for low. In most cases, it's active surveillance, uh, maybe for the bulkier or um, uh, more voluminous low-risk disease get treated, uh, and an in intermediate risk disease, basically divided into external beam radiotherapy, which has evolved from image-guided IMRT to moderate hypofractionated external beam radiation to stereotactic radiosurgery to proton therapy. And brachytherapy is associated with uh, LDR uh, brachytherapy, which many of you are familiar with, and HDR monotherapy. And these are associated with excellent long-term outcomes, really comparable to any local ablative therapy that's out there, especially when delivered well. And clearly there are evolving changes in the delivery of prostate radiotherapy, as alluded to, enhanced precision with the utilization of intensity modulated image guided approaches. And as a result of our ability to be able to target the prostate much more accurately, we can apply tighter margins and reduce the volume of normal tissue exposed to the higher doses of radiation. And this is exactly how stereotactic body radiosurgery for the prostate in particular uh, is a safe modality as we see even from randomized trials now emerging, the safety of this approach comparable to moderate hypofractionated or conventional external beam radiotherapy approaches. And we're able to deliver these treatments in shorter periods of time instead of 10 weeks of therapy in one or one and a half weeks. And the utilization uh, of a hydrogel rectal spacer, which is an FDA approved approach, and again, in a randomized trial demonstrated even with conventional fractionated radiotherapy, the advantage of creating that space and reducing the volume of normal tissue exposed to the high doses of radiation. And finally, focal dose intensification to the DIL is uh, clearly which we'll, I'll be focusing on something that will emerge as potentially very exciting. Well, the precision approach really is divided into radiotherapy planning and uh, which is, we talk about the delineation, the anatomic delineation of that dominant intraprostatic lesion where we can intensify the dose delivery. And classically, radiotherapy has given homogeneous dose distributions to the prostate with radiation. And we may need to start thinking about intensifying the dose where the disease is, and perhaps even minimizing the dose to the rest of the prostate where the disease is not located. The delineation also of the critical normal tissue structures associated with urinary and sexual function is going to be more important for us to apply dose constraints to these areas and ultimately reduce toxicities much more than we've seen in years past. Tracking motion during the actual fraction and intratreatment co correction. There are technologies now available for us within the actual several minutes of radiation to see where the prostate is moving, how the prostate is moving, and apply corrections to allow us to be precise during that actual treatment. And clearly, this is related to the fact that there is inevitably bladder filling during a several minute course of treatment and rectal or bowel gaseous distension as well. Well, when we talk about dose intensification, we are 
Uh, there's certainly plenty of data, published data, and I only pick one of many examples that have demonstrated the importance of intensifying the dose to the prostate. And one form of dose intensification or dose escalation is the com combination of brachytherapy and external beam radiation, which is a valuable uh, tool for the radiation oncologist to be able to treat higher risk disease in particular. And in this uh, Canadian study, a, a randomized uh, trial, if we could just go back one slide, uh, which uh, compared external beam radiation to external beam radiation and seeds, um, we, we can see that there was a significant enhancement in biochemical disease-free survival when the combination approach was used, that is brachytherapy and external beam radiation compared to conventional fractionated external beam radiation alone and both arms did receive hormonal therapy here. And even in the intermediate risk cohort, we see this significant difference in improved outcomes, likely reflecting the advantage of dose intensification to the prostate. It comes with a price uh, because in that particular study, there was a higher likelihood of rectal toxicity and urinary toxicities, not really observed by other institutions, but as part of this randomized trial. And that's why it is important to apply precision technologies, uh, precision techniques to enhance our ability to target the radiation and exclude more normal tissue, which is now routinely being done for uh, techniques that weren't necessarily applied in this randomized trial. Beside dose intensification, another very important aspect that we recognize really in the urologic oncology field is the importance of the dominant intraprostatic lesion. And it's well known that this is where uh, recurrences occur. In this early study that was done at our institution, uh, where the dominant lesion was noted here, and again, when you look at this um, on step sections, post-prostatectomy, this is where these, the original lesion is where the patients ultimately fail. And so it is key that if we're going to intensify dose, we really need to push that dose towards the DIL, the dominant lesion, which in this case was identified prior to radiation, and it's exactly the area where these patients recur if they ultimately do recur. And so the concept of focal therapy doesn't need to be that we eliminate dose to the rest of the prostate, although it's certainly possible to do, but maybe we could use kinds of heat maps, even for radiotherapy, to be able to intensify the dose to the DIL and in areas close or in close proximity to the normal tissue structures to reduce that dose as well. And again, with the combination of molecular or, and functional imaging, we could intensify these doses appropriately. And there is an emerging concept of focal dose intensification to the DIL. The concept was first introduced at UCSF by Dr. Roach's group, Barbie Pickett, and all was, she was the first author, where feasibility was demonstrated of treating a whole prostate to greater than 70 gray, 77, whatever, with concomitant boost to the DIL of 90 gray using an integrated boost uh, approach. At MSKCC, we also de demonstrated the feasibility and safety of using brachytherapy where regions of measurable disease based on MRI, MRSI, were boosted to 150% of the prescription dose. And actually, relatively recently, we updated these results really at uh, close to eight, nine years out, where the control rates were outstanding by boosting the DIL, again, in a brachytherapy setting, to very high doses. 
And this has ultimately uh, resulted in, in moving along in the field. Uh, one example, a flame, the FLAME study, which is a randomized comparison of whole gland conventionally fractionated radiotherapy to conventionally fractionated radiotherapy with a boost to the DIL. And this is a phase three multicenter study uh, conducted in the Netherlands. Intermediate and high risk patients are eligible where the control arm is going either to 77 gray or that integrated boost to 95 gray in 35 fractions. So here in a randomized trial, you could see where the field is going in terms of thinking about integrated boost intensification to the DIL, a DIL defined on multiparametric imaging. And actually a recent update with median follow-up of 55 months in this um, flame study did not show any increased toxicity in the boost arm. Ultimate local control uh, awaits further maturity of the trial. And the field you can see is going, these are just s examples of various trials that are looking at dose intensification to the DIL um, in particular, and, and we are actually doing a similar trial, reducing the dose to the bladder neck to the neurovascular bundle in the hope of reducing further toxicity. And such is shown here where even in stereotactic radiosurgery, a DIL boost is utilized here to nine grade times five, while the rest of the prostate gets eight grade times five, but further reductions to the bladder neck and to the neurovascular bundle and urethra. And we are cognizant with better anatomy that these are these normal critical subunits of the normal tissue structures, the membranous urethra, the trigone, the urethra, the penile bulb, and the corporal tissues need to actually have new dose constraints applied to them so we could further reduce doses to normal tissue structures and really make a difference above and beyond what radiation currently has accomplished. So here's my last slide where we need advances in radiomics. We need advances in molecular imaging integrated with radiotherapeutic approaches to ultimately allow us to have better characterization of the sites of higher grade intraprostatic disease and dominant lesion. And then the treatment approaches need to really be modified, our planning approaches to uh, concomitantly decrease the dose to other sites even within the prostate and intensify the dose to the DIL. Changing paradigms are clearly what we need ultimately to go from what we are taught homogeneous dose distributions to actually have selective heterogeneous dose distributions to target the radiation where it really counts. Thank you very much for your attention.